Okay, well, welcome everybody to our SCC webinar for today. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Taraka. Dr. Taraka believes every dog deserves to live the best quality of life for the longest time possible, pain-free, happy, and strong. Her company, Wizard of Paws Physical Rehabilitation for Animals, focuses on the moment that an animal walks in the door, whether they are eight weeks of age or 18 years of age. Dr. Taraka began her career in human physical therapy and specialized in orthopedics and pain management in both the orthopedic and sports medicine atmospheres. Her knowledge and ability to translate her knowledge from the human side to animals is unfounded. She has been able, sorry, she has been enjoying her work with animals over 22 years and is considered a pioneer in the field of canine physical rehabilitation. She is one of the founders of the University of Tennessee Certificate Program in Canine Rehabilitation. Through the university and throughout the world, Dr. Taraka has been a well sought out speaker on a variety of subjects. She speaks all over the world to veterinary professionals, allied healthcare professionals, dog enthusiasts, and owners. She is also the founder and heads the Certified Canine Manual Therapy Program through the University of Tennessee. She teaches regularly at the Frenzy Dog Sports Academy, as well as many other organizations. Her passions include sports medicine and working dogs, as well as degenerative myopathy. She focuses on the identification and treatment of pain in all of the dogs she works with. Pain is often overlooked in many physical and behavioral issues and may make the difference between success and failure. She sees a variety of clients in her busy clinic, Wizard of Paws Physical Rehabilitation and Wellness Center, focused on rehabilitation and wellness. Please welcome Dr. Taraka. Thank you so much and welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining me um, during this day. I hope everyone um, is doing well. And who doesn't love puppies? I mean, puppies are just fantastic. You know, it's always, um, I can't help but smile every time I see a puppy. Um, and I do work a lot with puppies. I was saying that maybe my six month old Clumber Spaniel puppy will make a guest appearance. He uh, always tends to uh, migrate wherever I am and um, he's a paper shredder. So I try to keep him out of my office, but we'll see if he makes a guest appearance. So, we're going to talk about puppy lameness or limping and limping in any dog, especially a puppy is not okay. It is never okay. And hopefully by the end of this webinar, you'll have a little bit more insight. So we look at these puppies and they're just like I said, who can't help but smile when you look at a puppy. The um, Great Dane laying on the total fit purple disc there is seven weeks of age and you know, something I always tell people, puppies are not little dogs. You know, just like we wouldn't consider our toddler a little person, you know, there are many things going on. This beautiful German Shepherd staring at us, she uh, belongs to a police officer who is a canine handler. She is not his, his working canine, but he had noticed right away about three months of age that she was limping and she wound up having severe hip dysplasia and had a surgery called an FHO to correct it. Now at five months, she's actually doing really well and you would never even know she had the surgery. So, you know, we look at them and just all puppies need more sleep. They um, can't exercise as much and I'll talk about that a little bit more about how they really are, you know, need to be treated individually, not like little dogs, um, with so many regards. So I know this uh, image is a lot here, but I just wanted you to understand a little bit about growth plates. And I'll talk a little bit more about them as well. So the growth plates are little, I consider them like little factories in each bone. And while they're open, they're helping the bones grow. If they become injured, the bone is going to stop growing and they can become injured by too much running, jumping down, you know, a traumatic injury, anything like that, like too much stress on the joints. And if we look, and I know there's a lot here, as I said, going on with this chart, but if we look up at the hip or near the tail, we can see where it says femoral head. So in some dogs, the growth plate of the femoral head does not close until 15 months. So that's over a year of age. 
Our giant breeds, such as our Great Danes, um, our Bernese Mountain Dogs, the growth plates may not close up to 18 months of age. And the same thing in the dog's elbows or their front. So think about this with the growth plates. They're not skeletally mature until those growth plates are closed. So as I mentioned, puppies are not little dogs. They definitely have different nutritional needs, exercise needs, and restrictions. If we look here, another view of the growth plates. So the puppy, we can see that big growth plate is open and that is the bone is still growing. So if that area becomes damaged, the bone is gonna stop growing. And as I indicated, too much running, jumping, playing, we work a lot with shelter dogs, and I always advise to be have, have um, exert caution when the dogs are in a run. Puppies shouldn't be jumping too much. They shouldn't be on slippery floors. Again, we don't want these growth plates to become damaged. So things to think about um, with your puppies. And to avoid growth plate damage, and here's my Clumber Spaniel puppy sleeping, um, I like to follow the five minutes of exercise per month of life. So if the puppy is four months, we're going to factor in 20 minutes of exercise a day. And this is not all at once. It is broken up. So maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes. However, we're always going to respect if the puppy needs some sleep, let them sleep. Because certainly they go through different periods where they, um, they're going through growth periods, they're growing more, they're sleeping more. You know, again, especially in our larger breed puppies, they seem to grow overnight and their body needs to adjust. So five minutes of exercise per month, and you just kind of factor that in. And, you know, so six months, 30 minutes of exercise. We never want to do extreme jumping, extreme running. And again, thinking about a, my owners that have agility dogs. We really don't want those dogs doing any agility jumping until they've reached skeletal maturity. If you're in a kennel situation, you know, think about the jumping a puppy may do in a kennel or a run. How can you restrict that? Sometimes just putting a tarp over so they can't constantly jump or run and turn. And I always say, if your puppy's tired, let them rest and sleep. Don't like go to wake them up. You know, just like a sleeping baby, you're going to let them sleep. So in the house, you know, of course, puppies can be nuts. I, you know, as I mentioned, this is my puppy right now. It's the first time I think in nine years I've had a puppy. And, you know, you start, they're fearless. Um, so we don't want them jumping off of furniture. That jump off the couch can put a lot of stress on those growing elbow joints. Um, you know, the same thing with jumping out of cars, all of that sort of stuff. We really want to be careful with it. We want to avoid running downstairs or jumping off of them until the puppies are at least four to six months of age, depending upon the size of the dog. And certainly I have stairs in my house. If the puppy, if you can't lift the puppy down the stairs, coming down once or twice a day is not a big deal, but we don't want them excessively running up and down. The same thing with slippery floors. And I always caution when um, the Humane Society takes in a litter of puppies or um, you know, the breeders. We know, studies have shown that puppies that grow up on slippery surfaces have a higher tendency to, for hip and elbow dysplasia. So avoiding excessive time on slippery floors, using phthalate-free yoga mats or phthalate-free runs, safe objects, that um, will prevent them from slipping. And again, if you have a puppy in the house or if you have a kennel situation and they have to walk over a slippery floor, that's fine. They're going to do it and not such a big deal. But we just want to avoid the excessive time. And here's just another uh, view of the growth plates. So again, if we look at the green and the red, these growth, growth plates don't close to between 12 and 18 months. So those elbows, those hips, the knees. So just again, keeping you know, aware of this, and especially in these large breed dogs, your smaller breed dogs, your chihuahuas, uh, your chihuahuas, all of that sort of stuff are gonna close earlier, but we still wanna be respectful of them. 
mental exercise is so key. And this is a snuffle mat. And I hear a lot of times I don't know how to tire my puppy out. So I take them outside and play ball. And that's probably one of the worst things you can do. You wanna combine physical exercise and definitely have some mental exercise. So working with things like a snuffle mat or lots of games are fantastic for puppies. And as I said in the beginning, puppies should not limp. This is my puppy who has started at 10 pounds. He's now 54 pounds at six months of age. And he is on my piece of furniture and getting ready to jump off. I try to catch him as much as I can. Um, every once in a while, you may see a, a limp for a second or so. You know, so see if that goes away. Um, any limp or lameness should not continue. So sometimes, you know, like us, we may get up and we just walk something off quickly. But if your puppy is limping for more than five seconds, and something to consider. And there are many reasons a pup will limp. And there's no other way to say this. If there's limping, there is pain. So the puppies are not going to limp for sympathy. They're not going to limp for any secondary gains, they're in pain. And they are going to tell us differently, many dogs don't whine. So they're gonna shift their weight. If we look at this young Whippet, she's only 10 months of age, she's got her weight shifted to the left side and she is taking her weight off the right side. So she's not telling us that she's limping or not telling us she's in pain, but she's showing us that she's limping. and assume again limping or lameness equal pain and we are not going to make that dog better until we find out why and we never want to push a dog through a limp or pain so if you see your dog limping it's important to stop all activity let them rest right away until you can find out the reason they are limping and the causes of lameness many reasons there certainly can be growth plate as i indicated hip and elbow dysplasia we can see this as early as three to four months of age. And um, certainly some breeds are more prone to it. Um, this dog standing here is one of our Humane Society dogs. She has hip issues and knee issues, and she's only 10 months of age. And we can see that she's really turning that left foot out. Obesity and nutrition can play a part. We recently had two pups come in with rickets. So vitamin D deficiency, they were actually raised um, by a veterinarian breeder and they he tried a different diet and they wound up with rickets. Fortunately, it took us about three weeks to reverse it along with proper nutrition and they're doing great. Fatigue, if a dog is tired, they could limp. You know, so we have to look at that. And then of course, structural issues. And I'll talk a little bit more about those. So obesity, puppies should not be overweight. And I hear this so often, especially with my Labrador retriever breeders that a chubby puppy is considered cuter. And that's not true. I mean, it's we're setting that dog up for issues for their entire life. With the increased weight on their joints, it's gonna cause a lot of stress on their growing bodies. So proper nutrition and weight is always so important. So, so important to keep your pups at a good weight. Um, there's something called a knuckle test where you can run your knuckles along their ribs and you should be able with your knuckles just to kind of feel along the ribs and definitely puppies go through stages where as I said they kind of grow overnight and uh, you have to adjust you know for what they need this is um, one of the puppies that had rickets and this is her graduation day from our clinic she has her little bandana on so proper nutrition is so important and it's important to talk, you know, either with your breeder or your veterinarian about a proper diet because larger breeds are going to have different issues and different demands and we want to avoid malnutrition. And unfortunately, you know, it was a, I haven't seen a case of rickets in a very long time and um, these puppies again, you know, did great. Structural issues. This was a dog that was in a rescue situation. She's actually about 12 or 13 months old. She was kept in a crate way too small for her. 
and um, she's one of the dogs we're working with from the Humane Society. And so she has a lot of lameness and it's due to structural issues and related to growth. So she actually wound up doing very well. So what can you look for when a dog, you know, with lameness? So definitely excessive sleeping. So puppies sleep a lot, but is your pup sleeping more than normal? So, you know, this is my little guy and he sleeps a great deal and there are days where he sleeps more than others, but if your pup is, you have to wake him to eat or wake him to go outside, something could be going on and it may be related to a lameness, it could be something else. I mean, with everything going on in the world and tick-borne illnesses, all that sort of stuff. So important to look at how much they're sleeping, how much they're engaging. They're sitting postures. So this I would consider a W sit. Um, some puppies are going to sit like this temporarily, but they shouldn't hold it. This is a sign of, could be hip issues, knee issues, generalized weakness. Um, I see this a lot with puppies that have grown up on slippery surfaces. Um, so we wanna look at how the pup sit. And here the yellow lab is showing just another way, uh, another, um, view of this W sit. This dog had hip dysplasia and um, once we were able to work on that, use a multimodal approach, started feeling much better. The dog on the bottom, you can see that it's kind of lazy sit and some dogs kind of adapt this lazy sit. Um, others just start with it. So I always ask owners, you know, or um, kennel managers, has the pup always sat like this? Because the dog, the the dog in this case, the left leg, the leg on the outside, um, had an injury and um, he wasn't able to tuck it under. And sitting, the border collie is sitting on an unstable surface. And this is one of the ways that we work with to get the dog feel, to get the um, area more engaged. And then hind limb lameness, so a rear leg lameness. And I'll play this video twice. This is a 10 month old Newfoundland. And if you watch, he is limping on the left side. So the left back leg kind of swinging it out a little bit. And again, I'll play it again because watching for lameness is sometimes tough. You can see just swinging that left leg out and not putting all the weight there. And if you don't know if your pup or dog is lame, um, you're having a tough time, one of the things that I would suggest is getting some nail polish. And I know it sounds funny, but putting nail polish on the top of the nails and then the bottom of the nails. And get a good red or pink color and let the dog be for 24 hours and then go back and look and see have they worn down on um, e e equally or evenly, I was trying to say equally and evenly at the same time. Um, you know, is there any rubbing? Are there any uh, variations there? So taking a look at that. So forelimb lameness or front limb lameness is a little bit easier to see. So what will happen is when the dog strikes with their front leg, their head will bob up. So literally their paw strikes and then their head comes up. And it can be, subtle or could be fairly um, dramatic. And the causes of this may be for elbow dysplasia. There could be a soft tissue injury there. There's a lot of soft tissues in the shoulder and elbow. It could be a sign of OCD or osteochondritis desiccans. It could be a growth related illness such as panosteitis or hypertrophic osteodystrophy, or it could be damage to the nail or the paw. And whenever I, owners are talking to me or kennel managers about a lameness that just popped up, I'll encourage the owners or whoever to look at the feet first. Because certainly if it, you've ever stubbed a nail or torn um, you know, a blister on your foot, it's gonna cause significant lameness. So always look at that first. Look at the paws, look at the nails, look at the web spaces and see if there are any issues there. Bunny hopping, this is another sign of potential lameness. 
So when puppies bunny hop, and it literally looks like this, a bunny hopping, they move both back legs together at the same time. So they use their back legs at the same time to move forward. And sometimes you'll see puppies just go through this for a day or so and they grow out of it. But it may be a sign of developmental disease, so we need to just keep an eye on it. Or as I mentioned, it could be this awkward puppy stage or transitional stage, um, especially when the puppies are in that goofy, you know, kind of they don't know where their body is. But if it's associated with limp or pain, which limping is pain, it should be checked by a veterinarian. Um, you know, so like you're going to take a close look at, at this. Um, and it's just, it's easier for the dogs to move this way. It's more of an energy conserving movement for them. And then certainly muscle loss. If we look at this dog on the left side compared to the right side, we can see how much smaller the left leg is than the right. Whenever there's pain and inflammation, there's gonna be muscle loss. And until we work with that muscle loss or until we work with that pain, we're gonna continue with the muscle loss. And the other picture, we can see that dog is not putting its limb down. Dogs will put 60 to 70% of their weight on their front legs and 30 to 40% on their back legs. So um, it's a little bit easier when the dogs have an injury on their front legs to see, a little bit more difficult on the back legs because they're not putting as much weight onto it. So this is something that you should keep an eye on and look at the puppies. If the dog has a difficulty standing, if they can't stand properly, and again, I'll play this video a couple times. As the dog stands, we can see they're having some trouble sitting and standing. The standing difficulty is coming from decreased hip extension strength. I'll play it again. So not a lot of muscle there. So the hamstrings and the gluteals or what helps the puppy stand. So if they're having difficulty standing at such a young age, why? Is it related to pain? And again, remember, if there's muscle loss, like this German Shepherd, we're thinking pain and inflammation. So I laugh right now about everything um, in the world that we're living in and uh, the, the COVID, um, especially when the United States first went into a lockdown and everyone was walking their dogs and I was definitely guilty of that. Um, when I first saw this joke, I thought, oh my gosh, how is this dog gonna come down? But it's important to think about, we don't wanna overwalk our puppy. Um, I think walking is one of the best exercises. We just don't want to overdo it, so. Puppy exercise, definitely working on safe, um, objects. These are all phthalate free. Um, you, you know, yo, um, having trouble talking today. Um, phthalate free and latex free. And we can tire them out this way by working on their core, working on their balance and proprioception. If your puppy is limping, we want to stop the activity. Not necessarily pick them up and cuddle them, um, although you can, but you definitely want to seek a veterinarian advice and opinion. And I also, if you're not able to right away, keep track of the limping. Um, I love journals for all puppy owners and also I highly recommend it for um, shelter owners to keep track every day of what the dog is doing. You know, when does the limp occur? Is it occurring right after activity or when they get up? Are they showing signs of stiffness? Is it present all the time? Is it worse in the evening, maybe when um, the dog is tired, or is it worse in the morning when they get up? So just trying to keep track. And the more information you have, the better anyone will be able to help you and your dog. Rest is always important, but strict crate rest is not always the best option. Mentally and physically, it'll be difficult for you and the dog. So you wanna adjust the activity. We wanna to try to find what's causing the lameness and the sores, certainly. But here are a great thing, working with those snuffle mats, peanut butter mats, all those sorts of things are great. And as I mentioned, puppy lameness is never okay. This is my dentist, beautiful little Frenchie. 
chewing on a, um, a toothbrush there. But I, as we mentioned in the beginning, the goal for all of our dogs is to live the best quality of life for the longest time possible. And that definitely starts when they're puppies. And I know you can always reach me through a CC, but if you have any questions after this, this is my email and I'd be glad to answer any of them. So thank you so much for listening to this.